Hi there, Uncle Davis here, and you're watching NPH TV. Nothing Pro here. Now, virtual reality or VR has really picked up a lot of pace in the last few years, especially after this guy was released, Oculus Facebook Meta Quest 2. Now, in order to get the most out of this headset, apparently I can get a few accessories to upgrade the whole experience. And in today's video, let's take a look of the few purchases I've made for my VR headset. Let's go. Now all the accessories I've got here in this video are from Kiwi Design. The first one is the link cable. We know Oculus has their own official cable, but that cable costs an arm and a leg, and maybe a stomach, maybe a kidney, maybe a liver, maybe you throw the lungs in, bone marrow, blood work, brain, everything. It is 120 Australian dollars on Amazon at the moment. I mean, $120 for a cable, for a USB-C cable. I know they're talking about their optical fiber technology in the cable, but $120 for a cable, that's way too much. I mean, if that's the case, they may as well also start selling a 180 watt power supply for $250, which gives you eight newton meters of torque on a direct drive wheel. Sounds familiar? Now. The thing is, $120 for a cable for casual nothing pro gamer is definitely way too much. Therefore, I've gone and searched for a more budget friendly alternatives and link cable from Kiwi Design was my pick. Now, this is the box that the cable comes with. Um, it's a very, very commonly seen packaging in nowadays. Um, very nice. I mean, let's be honest, these sort of designs are, are, are brilliant to look at. I mean, the brown bag from Uber is, is one of the reasons why I keep getting tempted to order food from them, right? So, <laughs> um, so open up the box, which you've got uh, nothing inside because I've already got the cable out, have been using it for the last few weeks, so you can see it's not really neatly tied and because once you get out of the box, you can never get it back to the perfect state, right? Um, now. The thing is with this cable, what they're saying is apparently this is the version 2 cable, which in this rectangular module here, it is a signal amplifier. Now, I don't know what that means or what that does, nor I do have the uh, version 1 cable or even the official cable to compare with, but the USB test result I've got from the Oculus app on the PC, it gives me 3 gigabit per second performance. I don't know what that number means. I don't know what that number should be in terms of good performance, but when I'm using this cable, I have no issue whatsoever. I got stunning graphics. I got no stuttering, uh, no lag, nothing negative like that. Mainly I use this cable for sim racing in Assetto Corsa, Cassetto Corsa Competizione, AMS2, R Factor 2, you name it, and I never had any problem. Now, some people on um, Reddit says, if you get one of these cheap cables, you may have issues when you try to plug this in to the Quest with a different direction. So let's say like this way or this way. But to be honest, I never had any issue. I can use this cable either this way or this way, no issue whatsoever. In fact, because my PC is in front of me, so it makes more sense for me to plug into the Quest on the other side. So the cables goes away from my head into the PC. Now, the only downside is, as from what I've heard, the official cables is a much softer cable, whereas this one is stiffer. So for those of you who may want to use this cable to play a lot of uh, VR action games, you know, those ones that you actually need to walk around or even running around, you may have issues. Um, but so far, I've played Beat Saber, I've played uh, Tennis Simulator, and I've played Zenith, and I really don't have an issue with it. So Link Cable from Kiwi Design is a good alternative to get from Amazon. Now the next thing to look at is a protection for the halo on the controller, which are just these two pieces for silicon cover. Um, obviously they comes in a pair when you order them, and this is just simply put onto the halo of your controller, just like that. And that's it. Now it is a little bit on the pricey side, but unfortunately I couldn't really find anything like this 
um, from Amazon or eBay or anywhere else on the internet. But if you do know, please feel free to leave a comment down below and I would love to learn about them. Um, so the reason I got this Halo Protector is that was one day I was playing tennis and I accidentally hit the door and I thought, well, maybe it's a sign that I should get some protection for the controller before I completely break it because I've already done some scratches on the Halo by that accident. So does it does it worth? I'm not sure, but it gives me a peace of mind. So to me, it's worth it. Now, the second thing to look at, as you can see, is the cover of the uh, controller. Now, this is also a very, very nice designed controller because it gives you direct access to the battery compartment there instead of you have to take the whole cover off just to replace the batteries. Now, the part that I really like is this knuckle belt thing because I can actually just put my hands into it and I feel like I'm always in control on my controller. Yeah. Now, the other thing is um, I'm a noob, I'm a nothing pro gamer, so when I have the control sitting on the desk, I can't actually tell which one is left, which one is right, unless I spend like 10 seconds staring at it. Um, but having this knuckle belt, it helps me easily identify which one is left, which one is right. Now also, um, the material here is really nice to touch, it's really easy to put it on, so basically you just slot the whole controller into the, the grip from the bottom just like that, and then you sort of get the cover across the halo onto the back, and there's the little knobs here to go through to secure the grip in the place, and that's it. And that's it. Now, there are a couple of um, downsides that I would like to uh, talk about. The first one is around the, the trigger. Now, you can see it's perfectly cut out for the trigger, which is very, very good. Now, however, I'm not sure if it is my problem or if it is a design flaw that there's a tiny little bit from the cover that may accidentally slide onto the trigger. So what that means is, if you happen to have the trigger pressed and then the cover slides down, especially around this around these corner, as you can see, it's pretty tight. It may actually stop the trigger button bouncing back up. So I had this problem in Zenith when I was trying to throw a fireball and I was like, why is it not working? Why, why is it not accepting my input? And then I realized the button was still pressed down from my previous attack move. And then and that's why I couldn't cast a fireball. So I have to sort of juggle the, the whole cover sort of up a little bit to make room for that little corner so that the button can uh, can bounce back up. So that's the downside that you may want to be uh, made aware of. The other thing is the battery compartment. Now, I said this is a very smart design, which I still um, stand by my point. But the thing is though, with this door, it doesn't really lock in place, so to speak, so you can easily flip it open. Um, and also it doesn't quite match the, the contour of the controller, so you can actually feel a little bit of the edge sort of popping out, um, especially when you're holding it in your hand, which is where the um, battery apartment goes into the center of your palm. It is not painful or anything like that, but it does feel a little bit annoying and gives me some concerns when I'm playing that, thinking, oh, is the battery compartment not closed properly? And that sort of takes the immersion away for a bit. Um, overall, it's a good product, but I think they can make it better. So maybe the next version, they can uh, improve on these few features. All right, so the last one we'll look at is the facial interface from Kiwi Design. Now, as we know, the original one that comes with the Quest 2 is a foam interface with the optional silicon cover. Now, I had no problem with that when I was playing sim racing. However, when I start playing Beat Saber, after an hour of Beat Saber, it just became so gross. It soaked up all the sweat from my face and it was disgusting. So I put the um, silicon cover onto it and hoping it will feel better. 
Unfortunately, it didn't quite work out for me. It's still giving me pressure points around the eyes areas around here, sort of around the cheek here, and it just wasn't comfortable. So I went ahead and found this guy from Kiwi Design and made a purchase on it. Um, it is a very, very nice soft cushion around here and it's wrapped with this fake leather material. So it's really, really comfortable. You have this uh, nose guard underneath here as well. As you can see, that will stop the light bleeding or underneath your nose, so it helps with the immersion. Um, it also have this little vent here that apparently it helps to keep the um, headset cooler within your face. Now, I don't actually notice any difference though, but when I was wearing this, I didn't have any issues with it. So I guess it's working. Um, it also comes with a spare of this uh, fake leather insert, which is just stuck onto the uh, actual interface through the vocals. Um, so if you want to share the headset with, say, your partner or someone else, then you can totally just swap it out when you swap the headset. Now, there's one thing that you need to be aware of is that when you put this onto the Quest 2 following the quick start guy. I mean, at least this happened to me that the quick start guy asked you to get the glasses spacer. Now I saw that and I thought, okay, let me reach to the original Quest 2 box to get the glass spacer out and put it on. And after like 10 minutes fiddling around with it and I couldn't get it on. And until then I realized it actually has a glass spacer already installed on the uh, facial interface. So yes, it actually comes with a glasses spacer on its own. So don't don't try to fit another one onto it um, because obviously it's not gonna work, but it may just be a Nothing Pro here, special edition that no one else are gonna do that silly mistake. Um, also with this interface, you also get a, um, lens cover as well so that you can just cover up the lens of your Quest 2 when you're not using it um, just to protect the lens really from any dust or anything that may get into the lens and do damage or even um, the sunlight um, so it is a very very good addition to the uh, package so facial interface from Kiwi Design it is very very comfortable I was thinking about getting one of those third party head strap but ever since I got this interface, I have no issues with the original head strap. Now, although your mileage may vary because we all have different head shape, head size, etc. But to me, this interface definitely working wonders for me. And now I don't even need to think about getting a third party head strap. So great product. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions or if you have any other experience with accessories on the Quest 2, please feel free to leave a comment down below. I would love to learn about them. And as always, stay safe. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.